All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, hopefully you can hear okay. If, uh, Allie, they can write in right into the chat mm -hmm. box. So if you um, can't hear okay, just go ahead and write in that there's limitations there, but I appreciate you. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching from right now. Um, here on behalf of Spiros and Everost, um, Spiros Animal Health, Price Medical, um, Cap Sports Medicine, and also BOSM, um, we're happy to, uh, to be here with you today. The whole purpose of today was to introduce or um, demonstrate the MyI2, which is a needle scope technology. Um, just this past year, the technology included um, a tablet that does uh, one of a kind MSK ultrasound or ultrasound in general, in addition to needle arthroscopy needle scope. And so it's, it's a one of a kind device. There's no other tablet in the world right now that can do scoping and ultrasound at the same time. So if you're a surgical practice listening, sports medicine practice, rehab practice, or even general practitioner who does a lot of diagnostics or procedures, um, without a doubt, this tablet is something you should take a look at. Um, what we're going to be doing today is the scope portion of it. Um, you can also find information out online and we can send you uh, information on the um, ultrasound component of it as well. Uh, primarily, we as sports medicine doctors or orthopedic surgeons use it for MSK, but it can be used for abdominal uh, with the various probes um, that are out there as well. So what I thought we would do is answer some of the questions. I know um, quite a few surgeons, veterinarians, um, specialists have had their hands on my eye, um, and they had a few questions, so we're going to try to answer those today. Also answer some of the uh, myths or misconceptions. Um, one of the things I hear commonly is that there's a challenge with um, visualization or with image clarity. So we're using a program today, a software called React. Um, this is what we use when we're training or teaching or working with our doctors in Finland or Australia, Japan, um, Philly, Nashville, Seattle. Um, without that, we couldn't do cases together or teletraining or teleeducation. Um, so you're going to see the React program is going to be giving you the image internally in the um, joint to the right, and then you'll be seeing on the outside a camera just so you can see scope portal position um, when we're pointing out the landmarks for the scope and also for the portal. Um, so the first thing we're going to demonstrate, of course, is the visualization to show you the clarity of it. You can have the option ability to have controlled um, image capture as well as video. There are drop downs as well for all the pathology. We made it specific for the canine, so the shoulder pathology, elbow, um, stifle, hock, um, that you can pull up um, drop downs of the pathology that you're looking at for the various conditions. Um, then we're also going to answer a question. Some people say, well, it's a direct um, on zero degree and that you can't see structures within the joint. Now, um, all I do is arthroscopy here at USM, and so I'm used to using anything from a 1, 9, 2, 4, 2, 7, to 30 degree oblique. And I can tell you with this, even with a straight zero degree, you can get to all those locations without a problem. And I'll demonstrate that here today. Um, one of the things that you can do with this is because it's very, very um, ergonomic, and it's also very, very pliable. In other words, you can bend this literally in half because even though it's a solid scope, it's very pliable with the fiber optics inside and you can bend it right back again. So if you're trying to drive to areas that you may not be able to see with the zero degree, you can easily add a little bit of flex or torsion to the scope. Um, you can go ahead and stress it and it will not snap, it will not put the optic and it bends right back again. So very, very flexible ergonomic to use your um, Then the last thing is people say, well, that's great. You can diagnose things, but you can't treat with it. Um, that is not necessarily true as well. We use this very, very commonly when we go to our national location, when we go out to Seattle. Um, the my eye is actually what we use for treatment for shoulders, knees, um, elbows, hocks. And so I'll show you today portal placement as well as the ability to put shavers in, graspers, RF probes, um, whatever it is that you're trying to treat for as pathology, um, biceps release, um, needle shoulder treatment, and so forth. So we'll go ahead and get started. We'll do the shoulder first, and we'll do the elbow. Um, and then we can do the stifle as well. So right now, um, this is a, um, a dog patient that's in uh, lateral recumbency. This is going to be the left side, the left shoulder. We're going to start with that. Um, this right now, we're just on a, a table um, position-wise, very similar to what you would do in, in your operating room. The my eye comes in a package such as this. So you can see here, it's a, um, it's a box, it's a single package. Um, these are disposable, but you can reuse these. They get a certain amount of usage out. You will have to gas them because it is a, a plastic um, hand piece to it. Um, there's also an injection port, so you can put your fluid on there, whether you're using a syringe, as you'll see here in a second, or if you're going to be using um, a fluid pump. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and we'll open this so you can see inside. 
we got an intro so this is how they come they come window pack um, and so you can see here this is already uh, prepared for use um, single simple seal pack um, seal pack that you can see um, so we're going to go ahead and just show this back and inside will be a tray um, that is contained within it all the portions of the scope that you're so you can see we have a scope we also have a crew of stopcock and the nice thing about this for those of you that do arthroscopy um, you know how challenging it can be because you have your scope, you have your light source, you have your camera. The nice thing is this is all in one piece, okay? So you have your optics within the actual um, sheet you can see here. You have your light source, camera, everything attaches in one nice um, table, which will then go into your tablet. Um, as far as the use of this, we're going to turn this off. What you'll see is that there is some very, very fine um, tip here. You can see that there is a needle to the tip. And what will happen is when I go ahead and I push down and I push out, you can see now we actually have the needle itself just with the teeth. When we want to engage our optic, and you'll see with the light on here in a second, we just go ahead and snap this down, slide it back, and then your optics are out with them as well. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, I'm going to plug things in. So what we would be doing is taking this opposite end, handing it off to our nurse. Um, again, this is, if you're using this for diagnostic purposes, you can do this right in your treatment room. Um, in humans, they use this, say, for instance, if you have a potential ACL pathology or meniscus, they'll actually do a local block and do it right there in the exam room. And uh, these are FDA approved devices. And, um, and so if you look at what we're going to be doing here, it's treatment, but we're just using it for diagnostic purposes. Again, you can have the dog under a brief anesthesia. If it's going to be something where you're treating, obviously we'll go into the operating room or the theater, and then you'll have a full set up with a full crack. So we're right here at lateral recumbency. What we're going to do next is take our 22 gauge needle. Um, I just usually standard scope portals. So here's the acromion process, find the scapula, your acromion process. We're just going to go ahead and slide your needle directly off the acromion process. I use a 22 gauge needle um, with a one and a half inch length. Um, this is a five or six cc syringe, just something small so you can aspirate. That's going to tell you 100% that you're in the joint. So we'll go ahead, you can see our flash right there. So that tells us 100% that we're in. If you don't see that flash, you're most likely not in. Um, so go ahead and pull your needle out, needle out and uh, just redirect. But you need to make sure your needle is in appropriate placement. Again, for landmarks, we're right off the acromion process. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a 20 cc syringe. I'll probably for a shoulder add about five to um, about 10 mils, just to descend the joint slightly. And then we'll go ahead and what we're going to do next, even though there is a very sharp tip to the end of the needle scope, I try to preserve that. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take a 15 blade and I'm going to just come right alongside my needle and make a little stab right through the tip. Okay, so just a little, just and I, I'm a little different in the fact that a lot of the scope um, labs that you'll, or training courses, you'll see them take the blade and go all the way down into the joint. I tend not to do that because I want to try to maintain my joint distension. And I find that if you use your blade, whether it's 11 or 15, to go into the joint, now you just lost your fluid. Um, I'd rather use something that is blunt and slide into the joint and allow the capsule to kind of adhere around it, if you would, or to be tightly sealed to it so that we don't have a lot of egress uh, from that um, and soft tissue um, uh, uh, swelling from that. So now what we're doing, I'm get my system over on this side. Um, we're just going to go ahead and we have a leg just in a normal standing position. There you go. So I've made my stab. Again, you're going to see that my optics are retracted. And I'm going to look for where my little stab was. And go ahead and have a light here. So we'll do a one, two, three. It's going to slide out, and I'm just going to slide directly into the joint. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead, we're going to press in on this handpiece. What that will allow to occur is our optics to go into the joint. So they were protected within the sheet. You can see the fluid coming out of my injection. Okay, so that tells us also that we are 100% in the joint. Now, there's a couple things you can do. We can go ahead and use a syringe. Okay, this is just a 20 cc syringe with some saline in it. We can attach that, and that will be our fluids that we're going to basically ingress, egress to the needle. Or we can go ahead and connect it to a fluid pump. Either is fine. If you're going to do a treatment, usually I go to the fluid pump. Um, if I'm just doing it for diagnostics, it's very easy to just apply your syringe drive in that regard. So we'll just go ahead and apply this. Our optics are there. We have the leg and a normal standing position. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add a little bit of fluid. And now you're going to see we're basically just a typical view of the medial compartment. Okay, so now the next thing we can do is I can go ahead and take pictures. So there's a little button that you can see here that I'm going to depress. And what that's going to do for me is obtain a still image. So if you look there to the left of your screen, 
you'll see a still image. Now, the next thing we can do is we can have a video of this. So I'm gonna have one of the assistants over there push the video button so you can see a video capture. That's gonna be in the bottom right of your um, screen. So if you hit that, now you'll see that we're gonna actually go into video mode. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and do our standard approach to the shoulder. So I'm gonna go up here to the biceps tendon. So I'm starting in the most cranial aspect. And you can see I get a nice drive all the way down the bicycle groove. Okay, so I can see very, very nicely you can see the clarity of the biceps tendon. Okay, so we're going to drive along. You can see where we have the point of origin of our biceps tendon very nicely. Then we can go ahead and get images of this, save some still images for the record, for the client, for the referring veterinarian. There's your subscap tendon. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of disruption, probably an active dog over the years, but there's a little bit of disruption to the subscapularis tendon, not horrible. We work our way up. Beautiful MGL. Okay, there's our needle going in femoral ligament. Let's get a picture of that as well while we're at it. Okay, we're going to come back here distally. And the next thing we're going to go is all the way to the caudal joint couch. Now, if you can appreciate, I'm going to go ahead and six foot syringes here. So if you look, um, we are all the way in the caudal compartment. Well, look at this. So for those people that say, well, we can't go from the North Pole to the South Pole, I know there was a question about that. We were as far caudally as we possibly can be. Okay, so this is all the way where the joint capsule is attached to the caudal from the head in this region. Now we're gonna work our way back up. Okay, we'll come back around. If we had a shoulder OCD, this would typically be the location that we would see it. Here's our glenoid cavity as well. we'll work our way back up. Again, MDL, subscap, work our way over, biceps tendon, down the sheet. Okay, so I, you can see this is not a 30 degree oblique, but for any of you watching this, I think it's pretty clear we can get anywhere we want to go and be able to visual, visualize very, very nicely. Okay, so also I think you guys probably watching at home can appreciate or watching your clinic. The clarity is pretty doggone good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the image quality that we're seeing here. In fact, um, you know, if you if you place your um, your three chip camera, your HD system, or whatever other technology you're using, if you have that. Um, I think this can run very closely to neck and neck, if not uh, better than some systems I've worked with as far as clarity. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop our video. So now the next thing is, okay, well, that's that's great. We, we have um, the ability to drive completely around the shoulder. Um, we can see everything. We can take pictures and videos. That would be very nice for diagnostic if we're dealing with something like a torn biceps or a medial shoulder or subscap, an OCD, a caudal glenoid fracture, um, any of those that we want to treat. Let's talk a little bit about treatment. So we'll go ahead and we're going to get our 22 gauge needle down. And now we're going to go ahead and our normal scope portal. So we're just going to come in here with our needle and we're going to go ahead and slide up this little bit. And look at that, my needle's right in. Okay, so we can see very, very nicely um, that we can get our instrument portal. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and have you hold my scope. I usually utilize my nurses quite readily and also. So we just tap right through the skin again, not into the joint. Now I'm going to use a switching stick. Okay, so for shoulders, I usually do do an ingress and egress. So this is your typical switching stick. Um, very simple. Find your needle, slide your needle out. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and pop directly into the joint. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. I'll pull this back out, and then what we can see is very, very nicely in this office over here. So now we have our switching stick in the joint. Okay, so now we we'll go back to normal position. What I may do now is just one more syringe, but I probably would most likely put a fluid pump on at this stage if I'm going to actually do a treatment. But let's just go ahead and demonstrate a few things. So we have our switching stick. Um, you can see we're in here very, very easily. So we can go ahead and do a treatment at this stage. So let's go ahead and, for instance, let's say we want to put our shaver on. So I have my switching stick. I'll just go to a simple basic cannula. We'll slide that into the joint. Okay, so now we are sliding this into the shoulder. As you can see, we'll pull this out. There's our egress. And I will just take, you know, any shaver unit that you use should you know, fit very, very easily into your um, port. And so right now, again, I'm just on a syringe. So I can give a little, little puffs, and then we can go ahead and do any kind of treatment. So if we want to come back to treat an OCD, we can come there caudally. There's my switching stick. I'm, I'm sorry, my uh, cannula, my foot car is going to be pulled out already, and there's my, my shaver. So if you want to go ahead and, and shave or divide for a shoulder OCD, oops, did I shave? There we go. So you can see very, very easily, we can go ahead, and, and I'm not even connected right now to a fluid pump, okay? So we can very, very nicely and easily utilize this to retrieve our flap, uh, shave, 
Now, the next thing is we can come up here. Let's get back to our normal location. Um, you guys want to give me the fluid pump. Let's connect this guy. Let's turn this off. Yeah, let me connect this guy. There we go. And we'll just turn this on. So now I have my fluid pump running. So if you're going to do a treatment, um, instead of switching syringes over and over and over again, I think it's much easier to just go ahead and check the fluid pump. Um, is our fluid pump on? I hear it running. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to slide this guy out. And let's, for instance, go ahead and take this um, grasper. So if we want to go ahead and, and reach in or our scissors, rather. And we're just working with our doctors from uh, other locations doing biceps releases. And, uh, and you can see very nice. So we're just going to slide this guy back. Uh, slide this over. So we can go ahead and get our scissors in there if we want to perform a biceps release and we're right up to the biceps tendon itself. So we can get to the biceps tendon to do our releases. We can get to our subscap to do radio frequency if we wanted. We need to treat our MGL. And if we need to go ahead and put anchors, we can do that. If we need to get shoulder, we can come back and we can treat our area of an OCP as well. We're we'll shaving in a second. So I think without a doubt that there's the majority of any procedure we can think of that we want to treat. Um, we can get to and treat very nicely. Again, we can go ahead and capture these images um, for our records, for our referring doctors, um, or for our clients if you'd like to send those as well. So any questions before I come out on the shoulder, um, you guys can, can feel free to ask or you can go ahead and write them in. Um, but the main principle here was that I think the optics are very, very good. I think the quality is good. I think we can drive to pretty much any location. As you saw, cranial caudal within the joint. Um, and, uh, and also at the same time, obviously based on our annual placement, we can do our treatment as well. Any questions? Okay, so what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and slide out and we're going to go to the other. So I'm going to turn my fluids off. Now the nice thing is also you have this injection port. So say you want to follow this up with a PRP injection. So we can go ahead, we can pull our fluids out. We know we're in the joint, obviously, because we can see everything visualized. Connect your syringe with your PRP and go ahead and do your injection. Okay, so that's another uh, another nice thing you can do as far as your post uh, post scoping uh, post surgical treatment. We'll slide this guy out. Okay, disconnect our fluids because we're going to go ahead and make sure again put your optics back within the within the sheet. Okay, so we don't injure them. Okay, so now what we're going to do typical elbow placement, right? So we want to make sure again lateral recumbency. We're going to go ahead and get a sandbag um, or some sort of um, some sort of structure to place something nice and firm to put underneath of the elbow. So we'll go ahead and slide the piece over just a little bit, and we're going to slide this under the elbow. So this will be your standard needle um, of portal approach to the elbow. So I'm going to switch sides with uh, Dr. McClendon here, and let's go ahead and get our needle and syringes. All right. So once again, if this was going to be something you're just doing for a diagnostic, say you. You suspect that the dog has an FCP or, or elbow dysplasia um, or an OCD or um, any type of trauma to the elbow. This is something that can be diagnostic and important and therapeutic at the same time. So just kind of hold that down. Very good. Um, we're going to take our needle. So this is pretty standard. So our epicondyls here, okay, that means our radial head is going to be here, humeral condyle, and our ulnar notch is going to be living right into this group. So I think you can see that very easily. So we're going to take our 22 gauge needle and one and a half inch length. We're just going to slide it directly into the joint. Okay, so now again a five cc syringe. We're going to apply that to the needle, thin needle, aspirate, and you can see our flash. Okay, hopefully you guys can, can visualize that. So now we know we're in the joint 100. I like my location. There's the epicondyle. I really need a landmark of about a finger to the away. So this is the humerus. We're coming down. Epicondyle. There's our only notch. Okay, so we're directly in there. Let's take our saline or LOS, whatever you're using. Attach it and here, not as much fluid. I'll maybe put five mils in there. Okay, so just enough to descend it, much less than we use for shoulder. Once again, our 15 blade, what we want to do is just a little stab into this skin. Okay, I, I'm not a big fan of going all the way into the joint. I don't want to release all my fluids that are just placed into the joint. Um, I want to keep this nice and fine um, as far as the capsule lab. So I have my assistant hold the needle, make sure our optics are retracted. I'm going to use like a pencil grip. Okay, I'm going to choke up on this. I look where she is and I come alongside. One, two, three. She pulled out. I just slide in. Okay, so you saw how easy that goes. And now what we're going to do is we're going to engage our optics. So there's a fluid coming out, so we know we're in the joint. Let's go ahead and engage. Okay, 
Now, for ease of use, we'll just use a syringe for our fluid joint suspension. We catch that. And let's go ahead and drive around. So again, questions are image clarity. The question is um, ability to go and drive with a zero degree. So let's go all the way up. I think that's as far as any scope would get to our ankyneal process. Okay, there's our caudal compartment. Tip of our ankyneal process in case you're looking at a UAP. Work our way down just to let's follow the honor notch. There's our genome condom. We work our way around. There's our radial head. Okay, we're going to work our way back. Supernate and pronate, if you don't mind. There's our radial head. There's our coronoid region. Okay, so neogenal condyle, coronoid, radial head. So if we had a jump down, if we had a OCD, if we had an FCT, um, if we're looking at joint congruity, um, I think we have a pretty good handle on that there. There was a nice paper presented at ACDS a few years ago where they compared CT scan to needle scope or arthroscopy, and they found both arthroscopy and needle scope to be statistically significantly more superior than CT um, in diagnosing FCTs, and that was out of UC Davis. Um, and so, again, this is nice for diagnostics because if while we're there, we see an FCT, we can go ahead and do our treatment as well. So we would go for our condom. Here, we're just going to do basic triangulation. And so we can go ahead and slide our needle in, and there we go. So look at our portal, epicondyl, scope portal. You can see this is going to be our, our needle. This is exactly where we're going to be going for our treatment of our FCT. And you saw that we can easily see this. We can get our videos, our pictures. Let's go ahead and make a portal. So we'll get our portal out. That's what we're we'll get going. Again, when we do this, I'm not a big fan of stabbing into the joint capsule. Let's just go through this thing itself. A little close on the piece of glue into there. There we go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to get my switching stick. Okay. And we know that the needle's in the joint. I think we see that very nice. So I'll do a little puff here. And I'm just going to do a one, two, three with the needle. Slide that out one, two, three with this. And we're going to go ahead with a little bit of break open. I think we're sliding off the counter. So we'll pull the leg out in a second just a little bit. There we go. All right. And so here we are. So you can see very, very nicely. Humeral condyle, too many pronates. There's our radio head. Okay, and here's a re region of our corner. So if we want to do a subtotal coronoidectomy, um, I think we can very, very easily do that. We want to get in here and remove our flap and shade our uh, OCD. We can easily do that. Um, the bright in these areas within the medial compartment, I think we can do that as well. So I think everyone can see pretty decent image quality. Um, very, very um, ease of use as far as if we want to triangulate and do any kind of needle scope guided treatment. Um, we can go ahead, let's just demonstrate here for a second to take our shaver. We slide that in, same portal. Oh, so let's put a little bit on there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to slide this guy in. Come back. Just kind of just a little bit for me. Okay. And we'll slide over. And we can go ahead and get our shaver in. We can go ahead and start shaving. So I think the, the nice thing is we can go ahead and do our treatments. Um, Again, now we're finishing an elbow, so what we want to do, we want to go ahead and attach maybe our syringe with hyaluronic acid or PRP, whatever were the biologics you want to use, and go ahead and do your injection all the way out. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to slide one more time. We're going to slide into the spikel. Um, any questions about it? Were any coming up? No. Okay, so far so good. All right, so we're going to pull this out. Make sure our optics are retracted. Okay, so we're going to slide this off to the side. Now, classically for a stifle scope, I have them in dorsal recumbency, kind of the butts at the end of the table, legs hanging off the back side. Um, obviously, you can see how we're set up here, so that's not going to be an option. So what we're going to do is something that I'll, I'll many times do for a injection of a stifle. I'll just keep them in lateral and do like a, a cross your knee, almost like you're sitting there with your iPad on your lap and you're reading, a, reading an article. Um, and so we're just going to bring the leg up and over. So we're going to try to keep our... Um, Position. I'm going to move the camera um, just a little bit and see if we can do this without screwing all of our positioning up. Slide this up here on the patient. Put a little cross your knee. There we go. Let's see if we can slide this up to the stifle. Get our stuff set up. All right, so can you guys see the stifle okay? Good, good, good. All right, so now what we're going to do, this is all very similar to what we did with the, with the other joint. So right now I'm just doing a, um, this would be the um, the left hind limb. So we're going to be going in laterally. Okay, then we'll be able to see the medial compartment. Um, 
ideally, again, I would like to have them on their back because this closes the joint space a little bit by doing kind of a cross your legs it does, but I think we'll be able to, for demonstration purposes, uh, walk across that. So work around it. So here's our patella, patellar tendon, cable tuberosity. So I'm going to do a pair of patellar. I typically split the difference. So this is the distal aspect of your patella, and this is your um, tibial plateau. I'm just going to go ahead and slide in just alongside. Okay, so right all the way back for the area of this CCL. Um, again, for here. So what we'll do next is we will aspirate, and then you can see the fluid canal on the So we're going to go ahead and aspirate. You know we're in the joint. There we go. We will go ahead and suspend the joint. Now, going to the joint, but a cycle joint, there's a fat pad, of course, and that can be the trick sometimes is working around the fat pad. That can become somewhat frustrating for uh, for some doctors that are uh, or veterinarians that are scoping knees. Um, but there's many, many tricks that you can use to get around the fat pad. So, go ahead and make a little stab. So, what we're going to make sure we have our optics once again retracted. So, this is the cycle. I'll start looking the sheet. Uh, we can see where our needle is. We're happy with the placement. We're going to go ahead one, two, three out. We'll slide this all the way in. And we'll come all the way to the optic side of the cycle. Let's say right about there. Go ahead and pull our optics. And we'll come up right here. All right, so right away, again, questions are always, oh, I can't see with a needle scope, the fat pad. We went right past it. Okay, so there is going to be our medial femoral condyle. There's our plateau. Okay, we're going to come along here. We can see all the way, all the way to the most. There's our capsule. Okay, we're going to start to come back over. I'll have you just do a little bit of extension from there right there. Perfect. And we can go all the way up and under to the region of our meniscus. There we go. So coming back over to this region, and then we'll come back up and we'll go all the way up proximal. So there's our proximal pouch. We're going to come up and under. Now we're in our propeller groove. Okay, so there's going to be our trochlear grooves. We can go ahead and see that nicely right there. I'm going to get another syringe and just suspend a little bit more. Can you have any more of those? Catch our syringe. Capsule, we're going to come down now the lateral compartment. Okay, so there is the most lateral joint pouch within the stifle. Work our way down the femur, coming back around, up and into a notch, and then we work our way down, work around the CC, and there's our CCLs. Okay, so we can see very, very nicely there's the caudal cruciate, there's a cranial cruciate, there's your craniomedial band, caudal lateral band. Okay, let's go back under the lateral femoral condyles to the area of our meniscus. So we are all the way back. There is our lateral meniscus. I think you guys can see that pretty nicely. Um, lateral meniscus is right there, sliding back. Okay, there's our crisscross of our caudal band and our cranial band. Okay, so I think uh, a little bit of fraying. Can you imagine that. Um, and it's a shocker. So, uh, so yeah, so I think you guys can see we saw medial compartment, we saw lateral compartment, we saw the posterior crucial ligament, the anterior crucial ligament. ACL, PCL, or PCL. Uh, we saw our meniscus very, very nicely. Um, so pretty happy with uh, with everything we're seeing so far. And then, question for all the interns and the residents watching this: What is that structure right there? Okay, this is called the intern. Uh, somebody's raising their hand here. Uh, yeah, long digital sensor tendon. Look how shiny that is. Look at that image. We can see all the way down into uh, that term, the cubicle of thirty. Uh, but very, very nice in its quality. Okay, and we were able to drive with a zero degree. All the way around the stifle and see our anatomy quite nicely. All right, any questions, Deb? All right, well, hopefully, this was helpful for you guys. Um, so, this will be hopefully recorded. I believe it's recording. So, uh, you should be able to have the ability to go back and, and do this at a, at a later date. Um, this also, if you're just starting out with scoping, um, maybe this will be a little bit helpful for you as well as with the AMRAC in that box. So, there you go. Um, so if you are interested in more information, feel free to go to Sierra Center of Health. Feel free to go to Trace Medical. Um, again, this is the, the My Eye 2. Um, I've been very happy with it. Again, we have four towers. We have a tower in every operating room. I've used pretty much every company's uh, scope equipment that's out there. And, um, and this is nice because it, it doesn't take a lot of space um, from a price point. You know what a full tower can cost you um, compared to going with a tablet base. If you are a traveling surgeon or traveling veterinarian, this is great. You can go from uh, clinic to clinic. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space if you're in a smaller surgical center or a smaller operating room or smaller situation. 
Uh, again, you can use it in the treatment area. It does not have to be used just in the theater. Um, and uh, as far as the ability to have um, something that's very, very easy to use, I think you guys saw that. It's very malleable. We can bend this, bend it back. Um, that's a challenge with a lot of one mount scopes is, uh, trust me, I've been doing enough scope labs with people and I watch them snap them right in front of me. Um, they're very fragile, where with this one, it is extremely uh, flexible, which is very, very nice, which is why we predicted the areas that we got to with a zero degree. Um, and can you do treatments with it? I think we just demonstrated that. So thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you guys thought this was helpful. And, uh, and uh, I think there was a special. Um, so if you are watching this, I think there's a 10% discount on the, uh, on the whole tablet system. Yeah, so the whole system is a 10% discount. Um, also remember, you may not be doing ultrasound, but maybe someone else on your colleague's car, or you are doing orthopedics or sports medicine or rehab, and you want to be able to diagnose and confirm that soft tissue injury. Um, remember, this tablet, even if you're not scoping, has the ability to do ultrasound. So that in itself, at the price point, you can't find an ultrasound um, small machine on the market that goes for what this one does. And then this comes with the scope of that kit. So, so, um, so the MyEye 2, go ahead and check it out. Um, again, in full disclosure, I'm a consultant for um, Terrace Animal Health, Everest, and Price. Um, but again, I wouldn't be here talking to you about this product if it wasn't something that, uh, that I recommend and use myself. So um, thanks for tuning in, and I uh, look forward to answering any questions in the future. Thanks.